Sorry that I'm not physically with you, but thanks to the technology, I can reach you. And what I'm going to talk about is the way pandemic created or generated a lot of paradoxes and gave us an opportunity to redefine or perceive our role in achieving SDGs. And I'll begin with one of the most important paradox. And later I will show you the examples of how some of the grassroots level school teachers have overcome that constraint that I'm going to talk about. So as you know that uh, around 50% children in our country do not have access to a smartphone or internet. Their parents can't afford it. So during the last year and a half, when education was online, they have been out of it. Now a question arises, and I would ask this question to everybody, as policymakers, ourselves, educationists, everyone. How difficult it was to imagine this problem. And how could we live with this exclusion of the poorest? Because the children in the government school generally are from the poorest families. And if these children, and I have taken this issue up at the Niti Aayog level and the other levels, so I have no hesitation in admitting or at least confessing that I did try to let people know that there are solutions, but we did not try them at a scale large enough to be able to overcome this inertia. So if we want poverty alleviation, then we have to educate our children and help them to grow themselves and help their communities to grow in generating more opportunities for themselves and for others. Education is a very important part. And I know Vrinda Bhan has, has devoted all her life and her father Ramral Parikji devoted all his life to Gandhian values in education, which is very inclusive education. Now, I will begin with that and try to bring you some lessons of frugal innovation for sustainable future through inclusive innovation. And I would argue that we need to mobilize both social and ethical capital. Of course, intellectual capital, natural capital are important, but social and ethical capital are very important. Social capital refers to the trust, reciprocity, and third party sanction. That is when behavior of a person who is not following the desirable social norms can be sanctioned by some third party on the street in the uh, system, then that is called social capital. So when migrants were coming back and facing difficulties, people who empathized with that and contributed to elevation of the suffering, obviously use their social capital to help people who are distressed. Ethical capital is when you don't get sanctioned by, ex by, by external actors, but your sanction is from within. You punish yourself. The Gandhiji gave a very important, very strong importance to voluntary suffering. Whenever there was something wrong that would happen in the country, he would punish himself. He would go on fast. And that is ethical capital. He was not mobilizing only social capital. He was saying there's something lacking in my character which has led to such a problem, whether it was Chori Chora or whatever other incident that happened during freedom struggle. He would punish himself, not others. So we need both kinds of capital. Capital which requires external sanctions against a behavior which is not responsible, which is not acceptable. But more importantly, ethical capital, where we regulate our behavior ourselves. And if there is injustice, if there is iniquity, if there is something, indifference, then we intervene there. And that is what the Honeybee Network has tried to do. So a nameless, faceless person comes in contact with the network gets an identity. So when we started this journey way back 35 years ago, it occurred to us that intellectuals are no different in terms of exploitation of people than other actors in society. We collect information from the people, we write, we publish, we become famous, we get consultancies, we get money, and nothing of it often goes back to the people whose knowledge made us popular, made us famous, made us achieve all the distinctions in our life. So surely we are no less an exploiter than other actors, maybe money lender, maybe trader, maybe uh, 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 landlord or whosoever. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to give voice, 
visibility and velocity to the fate of an innovative people in formal and informal sector. And I invite you all to be a bee. What does bee do? And if bee does cross pollination. Can we connect community to community? If there is something useful from our database, our all databases are open, I'll tell you about that. Honeybee.org, you will find several databases. All of them are open access. No password required, no user ID required, no permission required from anybody. They're open access. And some of them are in four languages, Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, and English. So you can see them, uh, read them, use them wherever you wish, whosoever you want to share. So that is the first condition that are we creating knowledge public goods? How much are we downloading and how much are we uploading? How much of knowledge are we sharing with the society? And I would ask all of us to reflect on our conduct. Let's say in last one month, how much did I share with others? My mistakes, my learning, my insights from the people or from whosoever. And how much did I download? You will agree with me. Most of you will agree with me that we download a lot. We upload less. And that is not our, that is not a sustainable future. Unless and until we share more than we seek, society cannot be fair and cannot be just. So I would suggest that we do cross-pollination of ideas, we share more than we seek. And if we learn something of people, we don't make them anonymous, we give them due credit. And if any value is generated and any returns, commercial returns occur to us, accrue to us, we should share a reasonable share of that with the people. So I'm going to try to change the context of our dialogue today. And I'm arguing that when we use language, please try to remember that language shapes the habit of thought. Many times, many of us, uh, rather carelessly, I would say, have been using the term bottom of the pyramid. What does it mean? Does it mean that poor people are at the bottom of all pyramids? No, they are at the bottom of economic pyramid. But when it comes to knowledge pyramid, creativity pyramid, ethical pyramid, institutional pyramid, they may be at the top. So how do we try to use language which does not disempower people, which does not distract our attention from the resources in which poor people are rich? Very important. Because then we will disown our responsibility. No, they are poor not because of us. Of course they are poor. Because we have not done our job well, we have not contributed enough to overcome the poverty. We have not suffered enough, voluntarily as Gandhiji advised us. And therefore our value system doesn't get shaped. So let us look at how we do that. So we do show the other. We walk in different parts of the country. We have walked in every state, from Andaman to Gorej Valley in Kashmir, from all North Institute, every state, some more than once. And we learn from the four teacher, teacher within, teacher around in the peer, teacher in nature, and teacher among the common people. People who struggle, people who strive. Sometimes, some of them are able to solve problems very creatively. And interestingly enough, majority of the people who solve problems creatively are very generous in sharing them with others. You might say, sir, that if such is the case, then why are they still poor? Well, that is because our institutions, our markets are not fair. So if I ask you, how many of you purchased, a, you know, in Northeast, almost every house in most states have a handloom, has a weaving tradition. So if I ask this question, how many of us have bought some, some piece of handloom, hand, handloom fabric from Northeast in the last one year or two years or five years? Answer would again be, not many may have done it. So the, whose mistake is this? Not the weavers who weave very well. And women will create a loom just around their waist. They will tie it and put with a tree. They will start weaving anywhere they want. Very flexible system of loom. A lot of beautiful colors and designs. Maybe they are not suited to our taste because we have not given them our preferences and our design. That's our mistake, not theirs. They're doing their job well. So if markets, markets, as you know, may not monitor the misery. We need to monitor it ourselves and identify the gaps, the unmet needs and, and unmet gaps in the supply chain, in the economic system, in the social system, which need to be bridged. So I will not blame them if they are not able to reach us. I blame ourselves if we are not able to reach them and able to get these services. Frozen flights of imagination, 
one of the paradoxes is that, uh, again, SDGs, which are very important for achieving, for their resolution, for their achievement, for overcoming poverty, for generating employment, for giving security and identity to women, all of those water conservation, etc. If we are still behind in achieving many of them, then partly it is because of the imagination, which is not fertilized enough. And therefore, our flight of imagination needs to be unleashed. We need to fly and imagine. Why does it happen? It happens because we are having a lot of knowledge. Knowledge is expanding enormously every day. The feelings about what we know are reducing. And our action doing on those feelings is even lesser. So we know so much, we feel this much, and we act only this much. My first appeal today is that can we make this ratio different? Can we change the shape of the triangle? Can we make it trapezoid? Can we make it a square? I don't know. There's something we need to do. Maybe trapezoid might be more fair because we can't make it a square. We can't act on all knowledge that we have. We can't uh, feel about everything that we observe. I agree with that. Even I cannot do that. But we can feel a little more than what we do. And we can act a little more. You know, there are two terms I always, always would like us to remember. One is autonomy. Second is agency. Autonomy is freedom to make decisions. All of us have autonomy. Agency is willingness or ability to use that freedom. That is where we lack. We don't lack autonomy. We lack agency. And who will give this agency? We ourselves will give ourselves agency. If I decide that I have to act on some knowledge that I have and I will feel strongly about it, and I will, my motivation will emerge that I will take action on that. And I'll show you an example. So one of the ways in which this happens is some way now. Now it's not exactly translated as empathy. Empathy is for others. Some Vedana is within. Some means equal. Vedana means pain. When I experience the pain of others as intensely as they experience it, it doesn't remain their pain. It becomes my pain. So in Sanskrit or Hindi, we call it Swante Sukhai, for my own happiness, I'm trying to convert some Vedna into Sarjan Shilta, empathy into innovation. I'm not doing a favor to anybody. I'm overcoming my own pain inside me, which is caused because I'm experiencing it, what other people face it. So that is, let, let me take an example. In for some of you might be working in forest communities, the tribal people. And uh, Mahua is one of the very important food that they grow. They are using this stone to crack it, to take the kernel out from which they extract oil, which they use in their home. Now, this is about 10,000 year old technology that they're using, maybe more. We couldn't develop a good Mahua nutcracker. We can send 100 satellites, 104 satellites in a single launch in different orbits. That is the capability we have. We can send a mission to Moon and Mars. So there's no, there's no doubt that our society has enormous technological capability. How come then these problems don't appear to us? As we say in Hindi, dikhta hai, dukhta nahi hai. We see these problems, but they don't cause us pain. And there are a large number of such examples. So you have to mobilize this. And I will just giving a small example of how do we analyze developmental vulnerabilities? So if you look at this, sorry, and ask this question, who is more vulnerable? The one who has less, who has narrow choices. So there's one dimension decision-making time frame, narrow or wide. On the other side, we have time frame, short or long. If in short term, we have very narrow choice, I have only goat or I have only poultry or I have only weaving. They have only one in enterprise on which I'm depending. Then I'm very vulnerable. But if I have a lot of opportunity, I'm being very opportunistic, trying many things, exploiting a lot of resources. It's not sustainable, but I might make some money in the short term. I may cut the trees, I may sell them off, but it will impair long-term sustainability. If I have only one choice and long-term, then I'm most vulnerable. But if I have long time frame and a lot of choices, sustainability can be achieved. That's our job. How to widen the time, widen the choices, how to expand the portfolio of choices for the for economically poor people, and how to extend their time frame. 
You see, if you grow fast growing species, they may mature in five years. But I have to get my daughter married after 18 years. And I need to plant slow growing species, maybe tamarind, maybe some other species like that, which will grow slowly. And maybe it will mature at around 18, after 18 years, 20 years for harvest. And at that time, I would need money to get my daughter married off and I will get a lump sum. If I, if I were to save, I can't save it. So sovereignty requires making choices of species, choices of sectors, choices of spaces where I allocate these resources in such a manner that I can have cash flow at the time when I would need for the meeting maybe for my family needs, educational needs of my children, health needs of my family as and when they arise. Now, let me give you a story of Gandhiji. So in 1960, uh, Gandhiji asked Vinoba Bhave, hey, how much earning will a person make if he uses the charkha that we, he was very fond of promoting? And he said, two anas, very small income. Gandhi realized that this had to be significantly more. Hence, he announced an open challenge to design and improve charkha in 1920. And there were not many resources. He wrote to the implementers of improved spinning wheel, February 25, 1920. And the, the, the competition will end on 31st March. Gandhiji will be judged. He will be supported by experts. The amount of the prize was just 5,000. He received a number of machines, but none of them were suitable. Uh, the change criteria for the award was changed. You should do five times more work than the common figure. Again, they received five, six ideas, none met it, they met the stated point. Gandhi was frustrated. He received a number of machines, none of them satisfying his criteria. What does he do? Now look at this. A leader like Gandhi gets frustrated, has no solution in mind, does something remarkable. He announces a global competition. 24 July 1929. And this time the award is 7,700 pounds, which is one lakh rupees. Now let us ask ourselves, and I would request KS to think about it. Why did, don't we announce challenge awards for solving per persistent problems of the people with whom we work? Anybody can offer a solution and let us give award to them. Let us allocate at least 10 to 15, 20% money of developmental expenditure for organizing these challenge awards. We will help you. Gandhi announced it, 1929, 1930, when he was in the Varda jail, he was using this charkha. Vrindavan may know more about it. The question is, it met all the conditions. If you go to our website, jati, um, gyti.techpedia.in slash announcement, you will find the whole announcement that he said. He, will, he was such a good, a designer of the challenge, he gave boundary conditions, what kind of solution he wanted, how much maintenance cost should be there, how much should be the weight, what could be the, uh, what kind of ponies it should make, how many yards it should be, uh, spin in the day, what count, all of this is specified. And it should be portable, it should be easy to move from one place to another, it should not cause dirty. Particularly the ladies should not get tired after using it for five to six hours. The solution came about. Challenge about work. 1929. Today is 2021. How many challenge awards we have had? The value of 7,000 pounds at that time or the 1 lakh rupees at that time would be about 10 crores today. We don't have even an award of 1 crore or 50 lakh for that matter to solve our social problem with which we have continued to live. But one nutcracker does not require 50 lakh award. It will require maybe 10 lakh award, maybe 5 lakh award. Somebody will develop it, surely. But we did not try. We did not try. So the question is, why did this Gandhian legacy of overcoming persistent inertia not continue? Why do impact, so-called impact fund avoid engagement with real unmet need? Inertia of 90 years? No inertia of millennia. And I hope, I hope, I pray that we will get disturbed today. We will become uneasy with ourselves and our programmatic consciousness that we will think about this problem, that we will not live with the problem unsolved. Look at all these problems. They're all unmet. Transplantation of paddy in a backbending posture, plucking of tea leaves in northeast, Sikkim, uh, in high hills. She plucked the leaf, put it behind the basket, and hand moves 
against the gravity. If you do that 10 times with me, you will find pain here and here. He does it 2,000 times. 2000. When we take a cup of tea, do we experience that pain? We don't. We don't. This chula, this stove has hardly 14% or 15% combustion efficiency. You double it, the woman will have to walk half the distance to collect firewood. You double it, much less distance, much less firewood, less carbon footprint. Better for the environment, better for the global warming also. Doesn't happen that way. These are the looms I was telling about in hand -loom. In every, almost every house of the Northeast, no value addition, no design improvement. So we need to ask, let me give you an example where sometimes, though good intentions are not enough, they can work wonders if we convert intentions into actions. So this is a hand pump. Most of you have seen hand pump. When you drink water, a lot of water spills over because the output of one inch diameter, one and a half inch diameter cannot be held in our hands when we drink water. So what did two innovators do? One of my students, Chandar, another innovator, Swain Bhusharma from uh, Rajasthan, gave two ideas. Another two innovators, Vishwaparma and uh, Yusuf, made this 100 rupees retrofitting solution where you have smaller tap for drinking, bigger for filling bucket. And if water is still spilled over, it will go into this trough for animal to drink. So what are we saying? Inclusive innovation, not just inclusivity of human beings, inclusivity of non-human sentient beings, the bird, the squirrel, the cattle. We need to have inclusivity of animals too, not just human beings. They are part of our life. They need water too. So the question is, if we define inclusivity broadly, then we will start seeing a share of them in our life. Some of you may know that in our country, we have a tradition. It is a slowly dying tradition, but still it is there. At least in my family and many of your families may be there. The first bread that you cook, you don't eat it yourself. You feed it to the bird, dogs, cattle, whosoever. So when I get up in the morning, I have to feed the birds and squirrels in my home. It's a daily routine. It gives me joy. I see them enjoying their breakfast. Brings me happiness. They are happy. Nothing is lost. One piece of bread we can easily afford. So question is, how do we create new rituals or revive old rituals which make us remember every day? Every day. I have to practice it every day because we tend to forget things. Now there's a great... Gandhiji, Gandhiji emphasized the practice more than the preaching. Because he realized that no matter how strong the value system is, if you don't practice it every day, you might forget. He was aware of that. That inertia seeps in so quickly, we don't even realize that we have forgotten. So we have to practice some of the values every day. These are different kinds of drills we found in Assam. Dimaji that we had found for Shoya. Different kind. Within one village, we found all of them for carbon wood. Now, surely they can be improved. But the paradox is that when we do it manually, we transfer energy from big wheel to small wheel. When we do it mechanized way, motorized, we do small wheel to large wheel. If there is no electricity or regular electricity, obviously we'll have to rely on mechanical solutions. Not everybody can afford a diesel motor. So please appreciate that there is, that we can't abandon all manual solutions completely just because they, are, they seem to be our type. If in some places we cannot bring energy, other sources of energy, we'll have to possibly improve them. Maybe put a ball bearing in there. Maybe we reduce the drudgery. Maybe improve the design better. Make a gearbox, maybe. So what are we saying? I saw this tree in Kangara, Himachal, during our show, Yatra. I used to take my students also in Himalaya. And I asked this tree, what happened? By, why did you do? Sir, I was not supposed. He said, uh, dear friend, I was not supposed to branch. I did branch. I made it into a parallel span. That's very interesting, very clever of you. I asked myself, I'm speaking to you. Some cells in my body are going through mutation. Thank God they are not cancerous. So I can continue to talk to you. What is this property of nature? Self-correcting, self-design. Those cells which are defective are being bypassed, by, are being repaired, are being rejected, are being rejuvenated. Now, if we can develop solutions where learning is involved so that they continue to become better and better, a knife which becomes sharper with cutting. Can you imagine that kind of a knife? One which becomes sharper, doesn't become blunt, 
that is the kind of institution we need to create for development where they will learn and every year our unit cost may go down slightly because of innovation we become more efficient we learn and we learn and we share and one person's mistake makes everybody else learn we share our mistakes we share our blunders for that matter why not why shouldn't we do that so the question is we don't only share our achievement we also share our mis mistakes and that creates an environment where learning becomes faster when learning becomes faster progress becomes faster that's the principle of society uh, of a sustainable society this is of arunachal pradesh zero district and this is a machine that he designed like like ibat how many machines did he make very few hardly any just one why can't we support such innovators to make more so that drudgery can be reduced this is the traditional way of flattening the bamboo for making mats and roof and all of that another example of empathetic innovation or the samvedan shield so in shilta this girl saw that walker doesn't his grandfather her grandfather couldn't use walker on his step she gave an idea our team developed it when you go down our team and i have developed it national innovation foundation when you go down the legs become taller when you go up legs become shorter this was licensed to a company she was one of the youngest person who got royalty and entrepreneurship children can be problem solvers children can solve problems and the kid said several kids from different parts of the country saw that when we sit before the computer our posture is not right sometimes i am leaning back sometimes i am leaning forward and i am not putting my back like this if i am not sitting properly it will sense my posture give a message sit properly i will not let you do work Who are talking about this problem? Children are talking about. It. Can we work with these children? Can we work with these communities? Look at this. How many different ways they are using energy? Four layers: one, two, three, and on the top there's a seed bed. This is the wood which they in uh, Meghalaya they treat it. When they cure the wood, it becomes stronger for trolleys that they use for transportation. Here is a firewood uh, in uh, Chirapunji, which has the highest rainfall in the world. You need to dry the wood. Here you have meat and cheese on the top. Here, what a powerful way of conserving energy! In our kitchens, all the heat above the gas goes waste. Can we need it in our kitchen? Learning from these people, we need to save energy. They know how to save energy. They have not learned anything from them. So a change not monitored, the change not desired. I am coming to the last part of the presentation. How do we? Ask those questions which need, which have not been asked, and therefore we are not bringing about the change that we need to bring about, and we are not bringing about the change that is to be brought about faster. Even if we are bringing out, it's very slow. How do we increase the speed of the change? Maybe by asking ourselves, having a stronger indicators, monitoring ourselves more rigorously. We need to be accountable ourselves, isn't it? We want every institution, society to be accountable. We want government to be accountable. We want donors to be accountable. We want everybody to be accountable. But we don't want to be accountable ourselves. Not enough, I would say. So how do how do we improve? So, for example, one of the indicator I think we should all incorporate is download to upload ratio. Every institution. How much did you con? How much content? How much knowledge? Experiential knowledge, not just theoretical knowledge, not just verbosity, not just rhetoric. Experiential knowledge, knowledge which has an ability to improve the practice of some work. That I am doing in my com in my community. How much did we share? How many words? How many blogs? And did it get read? Did did we share in local language so that people can change? So how do we create that? I will not go into detail, but just saying to say that when we look at innovation, sensing and met need, we have inertia on one side, initiative on other side. It doesn't require too much effort to convert inertia into initiative. That's how we could mobilize hundreds of thousands of innovation in our country. Having walked six thousand kilometers in the country, there's never a chance that we did not discover creative solutions. Recently, we went from fourth August to eleventh August. I was in Amreli, one part of Gujarat. We got twenty-six different innovations in four five days. It was possible because people were generous and sharing their solutions. So it is important that we try to share what we know and bring those solutions around and. Uh, continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. How will it continuous improvement take place unless I share? I cannot learn only from my own mistakes. I should learn from others' mistakes. And therefore, we redefine our goals, repurpose our tools, redesign our solutions, recalibrate our indicators and values, rejuvenate our instruments. 
and recontextualize ourselves, then there will be transformation and social innovation will take place. So uh, I would say that we should also be inclusive over space, sector, season, social segments, skills and structural governance, accessible solutions, affordable solutions, and available solutions. Supply chains are very important. We don't deliver solutions in time, and at cost that people can afford, then they're no good. They may lie on our shelves. So we did an experiment in Gyan recently. Last year, about 200 schools during the lockdown, we sent seeds to these schools to grow nutrition gardens. And the question was, children are not in schools. Who did you give the vegetables? So they shared. Somebody gave it to pregnant women. Somebody gave it to sick people. Somebody gave it to children. And this year, when we shared this experience, people started asking for seed. Around 800 schools from Northeast to Kerala to Kashmir have asked seeds from Jan and we have sent free a packet of 13 seeds. Grow them. And when children come to school, show them. And if you don't have ground, grow it on the roof. People teacher did that without our telling them. So this became an accessible solution. We democratized. Many of them made their own seed. Now nutrition garden are growing like anything without much support from outside, just seeds are being shared. So there can be sometimes very low cost solutions to the problem and can be democratized. Their learning can be democratized and let there be demand driven process of diffusion. We're not asking you to do it. They're asking us to send us seeds. And they share the photograph. Today we got the seed, they send a photograph. Now we have planted, they send the photograph of the sprouted seedling. And then they send us, of course, the photographs of the growth of them. So this is the triangle that 97, when we set up Jan, we realized that there's a need for making this triangle attack on innovation, investment, enterprise. I may have innovation, you have investment, somebody else will set up an enterprise, not necessarily the same person should do all the three things. Innovations could be technological, institutional, educational. Investment can be intellectual, material, financial. Enterprise can be economic, social, cultural, ecological. And we create this golden triangle of Jan that we are talking about, where I'm sitting at the moment just now. So it will be very important. I mean, and, and we invite you all. We have we had a micro venture innovation fund. You have heard about microfinance. Microfinance is for goods and services for which market exists. Micro venture innovation fund is for goods and services for which market does not yet exist. There was no concept of micro venture finance when we set up this first time in 2003 at NIF. Now, last year we worked with a small scale industry, Jalun Bank of India. For one year they gave us that. Doesn't matter. We funded people from Manipur making a lady Vijay Shanti making Vijay Shanti making uh, fabric out of lotus stem fiber, or Burgis in Karnataka making straw pipes, or drinking from the fallen leaves of coconut. And women are being trained and giving machines to do that. So all over the country, we finance those innovations which in generated jobs. Generally, we gave a bias, we were having a bias where women were involved in one way or another, either as a worker or as an innovator. And it worked very well. It worked very well. So distributed creativity is a network leadership. I will just give an example of how uh, people have to, to, to overcome the lack of smartphones. So Ashok Bhai and his team in North Gujarat used cable TV network and reached more than 20,000 children. Balaji Jadav did something interesting. He discovered that children have, their parents have ordinary phone, future phone, not a smartphone. And there's a system of conference call. 10 students can be taken in one conference call. There were 40 students to be taught. Four calls and he, the whole class is included. Four calls. And the children were included. What is the cost of this innovation? Very little. Then he collected the student's stories and shared them. We gave him her HBN Kriya Award, HBN CRIAA Award, Creativity and Inclusive Innovation Award. We started it last year. We got 2,500 entries from 87 countries that we reviewed and gave 14 awards, one of which was the other for this. It's such an inclusive, low cost, affordable solution, overcoming the injustice and inequity of educational system of online education, which only reached the people who had smartphone or internet. 50% children were out of, of the education system. This fellow, an assistant teacher from Maharashtra, overcome that problem. And they reached. 
So there are different kinds of solutions that have been found. So we have innovation competition for ignited mind for children, and we have HB and Priya. Now the date has been extended to November and for any adult can send innovation to HB and Priya at honeyyan.org. HB and Priya at yan.org. And for children, ignited mind at honeybee.org. And these competitions are open to anybody. Anybody can send their ideas. We invite all of you to help us reach those creative people in our society who have solved problems. All the databases are open. I will not go much into that. But please do look up these databases and see if you can help us reach. We have built a database with UNDP, uh, grid.undp.org.in. German collaboration with UNDP Innovation Accession Lab Network has created uh, uh, Innovation Accession Lab in 91 countries, 113 countries, 91 lab. And I and, I and Anamika, CEO of Jan, taught a course to these students, missed uh, these professionals of these labs, management of inclusive innovation for social transformation. And this database was made with UNDP Delhi. So what are we saying? Please create clubs of innovation. Search, spread, celebrate. Invite innovators to your meetings. Let them share their stories with you and sense the unmet need. These are the four steps. Very simple to remember. Search, spread, celebrate, and sense the unmet need. There are different kinds of solutions. I will not go more. I'll close here by saying learning, leveraging, linking, and electrification. All the four steps are important. If you miss any one, then learning will not be complete or will not help the organization. The network that you are creating, all of you are meeting as a part of network. The power of your network lies in learning from each other, in leveraging these innovations, creating actionable plan as to, okay, this idea I like, I'm going to implement it. And then make a commitment to yourself and share with everybody else. I will support to you what I did with your innovation. And you might even improve that idea. The derivative innovation as we call it. Then you link it, link the people with whom they work with other stakeholders, investors, and techniques, and legitimize it, influence the policy even when it arises. And that's how we will realize that small is scattered, scattered is diverse, diversity breeds creativity, compassion triggers innovation. Thank you so much.